He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. The thoughts of good and not of evil. That you would have an expected end. The will of God is not the will of man. The will of God for man is that man should have an expected end. I want you to focus on Jesus tonight. He's the one that can give you that expected end, that fulfillment. That's it. That thing that your heart desires, only Jesus can give it to you. No man, no uncle, no brother, no godfather, no godmother. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. The psalmist says in Psalm 121, I lift my eyes unto the hills That's from it. whence cometh my help. I don't know how many people desire help in 2022. It is time to look up to the hills. Take your eyes off man. Take your eyes off family. Take your eyes off friend. And focus on Jesus.
in this year 2022 as you stand on this ground you will not fall amen, amen. as you stand on this ground you will not fail amen, amen. Hey. my hope is built hey. on the Opportunity to be in your yes. presence. The one who says yes, no man can say no. The God who opens a door, no man can shut. The one who does not seek the permission of men to bless you. We have come to appreciate you tonight. Your children have gathered in your presence. Even as your word is released tonight, let your word receive expression in their lives. Amen. Let your heart be open and let transformation take place. Let your understanding be open and let the word manifest in their life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Amen. Jam those hands together for Jesus while you take your seat. Away. Please, if you are at the back, come forward. Except you are not seeing a child. Come to the front if you are at the back. Let's fill up the spaces in the front. Hallelujah. Is there someone in the house tonight? I say hallelujah. Have your seat in God's presence. God bless you. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, welcome to day three. If your neighbor no talk to you, look for another neighbor. Say welcome to day three. Hallelujah. How many of us have been blessed from the beginning of this meeting? Hallelujah. God has been speaking to his people. He has been giving us secrets and revelation to defeat poverty in our life. And I pray for someone that in this year 2022, poverty will not see you. In this year 2022, you will put an end to poverty in your family. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 27. Genesis chapter 27. <laughs> God specifically ordained this meeting. So if you make the best out of it, it will produce for you. If you put everything you will have learned and you will learn to work, this year 2022 you will shine. There are things that work for people and do not work for others. Somebody listen to me now. I'm going to say something that is very interesting. There are certain things that people do. It will work for this person. It will not work for this person. And we tend to question it. When you do it and it doesn't work for you, 
Are you sure this thing is real? That is why well, tomorrow the issue of tithe is a controversy. Because it works for some people and it doesn't work for some people. Life itself is spiritual. Life and everything that pertains to life is spiritual. What you see in the physical is what has happened in the spiritual. If you understand that life is spiritual, you will handle life with caution. Hello? If you understand that life is spiritual, you will respect rules and principles in life. The book of Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 says, It's not by power nor might, but by the Spirit of God. The ark of God was in the house of Obededom three months and it changed the man's life. The same ark of God was with the Philistines for 20 years and it was killing people. I don't know if somebody heard what I just said. The ark of God was in the house of a man called Obededom. And he turned the man's life around. He blessed the man. It enriched the man. This same ark of God was taken to the land of the Philistines. Instead of blessing them, it was killing people. <laughs> Somebody will ask me, is it not the same ark? So many people will walk into this church and say, Ah, Prophet Kenneth Kanu is my father, and nothing will change in your life. Somebody else will enter and say, He's my father, and it will work for him. And somebody will say, What is the difference? You can be in a church for 10 years and your life does not change. Somebody will come in in one week. And his life will change. There are rules and principles. What I call cultures. Of certain move. In the spirit. It is left for you. To understand it. And walk with them. So that it will produce for you. Hello. Follow me. The Philistines did not understand that there was a culture of carrying the ark. So they carried the ark and it became a piece of furniture in their house. Even if the whole pastors in Nigeria bless oil, if you do not apply the principles and the culture of the anointing behind the oil, it won't work for you. Hello? <laughs> The same Elisha that Gehazi followed carried leprosy. Somebody else who did not even follow the Elisha was dead. Only his bone raised him up. There are principles and rules to certain things in this kingdom. They did not understand. Hear me. When you are carrying the ark of God, in those days, when they are carrying the ark, for every step you make an offering, for every step you put a sacrifice, for every step you kill an animal, something must be dropped at every step for the ark to walk. But the Philistines did not have the manual because it was not meant for them. Hear me, child of God. I don't know what has not been working in your life, but after tonight's meeting, it will begin to work for you. I don't know if somebody's understanding me tonight. Genesis 27 verse 1 to verse 4 28 and 29 Are you there with me? Say amen. Are you there with me? Say amen. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that they could not see he called Esau his eldest son and said unto him my son 
and he said unto him, Behold, here am I. And he said, Behold, now I am old. I know not the day of my death. Verse 3. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons. Somebody say weapons. Thy quiver and thy bow. And go out to the field. And take me some venison. And make a savory meat. Such as I love. And bring it to me. That I may eat. That my soul may bless thee. Before I die. Hello. Let's go to verse 28. <laughs> Therefore. God give thee. Of the dew of heaven. And the fatness of the earth. And plenty of corn and wine. 29. Let people serve thee. And nations bow before thee. Be Lord over thy brethren. And let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that cursed thee. And blessed be he that blessed thee. Hear me. Tonight, I want to speak briefly on assessing covenant wealth through the venison. Assessing covenant wealth through the venison. Somebody will ask me, what is a venison? <laughs> this was a story of two boys born on the same day by the same mother almost at the same minute they were twins but if you know that story very well you will understand that there was a prophecy that came before they were born that the elder will serve the younger a prophecy came that the elder brother will serve the younger brother and I'm very sure their mother sang that song to them every day. But Esau did nothing about it. There are so many of you, you come from a family, you know that nothing can happen here. You know that in this family, it's all about sorrow and mourning. Nobody has traveled out. Nobody has built a house. Nobody, nothing has happened. And you fold your hands and you're watching. <laughs> and then one day the prophecy was about to be manifested Esau came from the farm he was hungry and he saw his brother cooking and he told the brother please I'm hungry give me your beans make a chop and the brother said to him I will give you the beans if you give me your bedroom and the guy casualized it. Hear me? If you are a casual Christian, you will be a casualty. If you casualize and trivialize everything, you will be a casualty. Then go use you do to speak. Is somebody listening to me tonight? He so sold his birthright with a plate of food. The father was aware. The father knew what transpired and wanted to give back the birthright to Esau and told him, go and prepare food. By food, you lost your birthright. By food, you will get it back. I don't know if somebody understands me. <laughs> the venison was God's strategy for restoration. God wanted to restore to Esau what he had lost to his younger brother. But the guy was a casual Christian. Run away from people where God tell you, say, serve God with sense. Hear me, you don't serve God with sense. Because the Bible says that they that serve me, they that worship me, must do it in spirit and in truth. So if you must serve God effectively, it must be done without human reasoning. Don't think 
Never you interpret this Bible with sense. It is not a physical book. He was a casual Christian. It doesn't matter, Joe. What will be, will be. What will happen, will happen. I can't keep myself. I, God understand. That's the language. God understands. But hear me. God has principles and rules for serving him. You don't serve him anyhow. You don't serve him in your own terms. He has his terms for serving him. Somebody shot. He said, they that worship me must do it in the spirit. A spiritual man understands the things of the spirit. A spiritual man is sensitive to know what God is saying by time. Jesus said, I know my sheep and my sheep know me and they hear my voice. Do you know the voice of God? Hallelujah. Is somebody hearing me tonight? <laughs> hey! there are principles and rules in the realm of the spirit Isaac was a patriarch he understood that his son has sold his birthright for a plate of food and he said to him ah go and bring a plate of food the one that I love hear me somebody will ask me but what is a venison a venison is a prepared sacred sacrifice somebody hearing me a venison is a prepared sacred sacrifice you prepare it you don't think about it Isaac said to his son the one I love the one you know where they sweet my belly go and prepare it but I like what he told him before he sent that message. He said, take a bow. Take arrow. Take all your gadgets and equipment. You know why? Venison is not easy to release. You need to fight your flesh for you to release a venison. You need to kill your needs, your desire for you to give out a venison. A venison is a sacrifice you give. When you finish giving it, you'll be crying. I'm not talking of seed. What is seed? 1,000. No, 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 no. <laughs> Pastor David Ibiomi said something. He said today he does not have he doesn't have count of lands he has in Portacourt. You know why? The first million he had to buy a land, he gave it to God. The first money that came to him to buy a car instead of him to be trekking. He had the opportunity to buy a car. He carried the money and he gave it to God. That is a venison. That's which I love. He needed to provoke the blessing of fathers. He needed to provoke him. If you read that verse very well, verse 4, Isaac said to him that my soul will bless you, not my mouth. There are blessings that come from the mouth. You know they enter. There are blessings that will come from inside. Even if the person praying, he does not like your face. But where it is coming from, the world is hearing. The heavens stand at attention. And whether you like it or not, it happens. Go and bring me a venison. You want to assess kingdom covenant. Covenant wealth in this kingdom. You must learn to drop venisons on the altar. <laughs> Is somebody listening to me? If Esau has brought the venison, the birthright would have come back to him. But because he's a casual Christian, let daddy wait. Make her go play ball. Let daddy wait. Let me go and do something else. On my way back casually, hear me, the things of God are not what you procrastinate. The things of God you don't handle casually. When God releases a word, you run with it. Because the kingdom, the work of the kingdom requires haste. Haste. 
I was telling somebody, grace has timing. It gets time. After some time, it expires. Even if you do that assignment, and the timing of the grace has expired, it can work. Hello? Is somebody listening to me? I don't know what you have lost in your life. I don't know what you have lost coming from your family. Hear me after this meeting. It will be restored back to you. I say it will be restored back to you. I say it will be restored back to you. If you believe the prayer, shout fire. If you don't understand the principles of God, <laughs> You cannot enjoy your work with God. Venison. The power of venison. <laughs> that my soul. That my soul. So many of you, your fathers are still alive. Your physical fathers, your biological fathers are, are, are still alive. Have they blessed you? Have they blessed you? How many times have you taken a gift, something that you know your father loves? You sit down and say, this man, I know he loves this thing. When he see him, he go tickle the guy. Ah, he go tickle him. And then go and present him before and let him tell you, God bless you. That's all you need. Hello. If I ask people here, say, when was the last time you called your father? How many of you get Papa here? Raise up your hand. Eh. When was the last time you bought a recharge card for your father? Abuna, they go collect for their hand. It is an error. If you are going to collect from your father, change is an error. It is an error. Isaac said to Esau, prepare it, prepare it. But hear me, there was somebody somewhere who understood, who understood what, what Isaac was about to release. There was somebody somewhere who knew what was about to be let out. And she said no. She said no. Because, listen to me, naturally we will judge Rachel and say, wicked woman, how can you divert somebody's blessing? Both of them were her children. She did not hate anyone. Are you listening to me? She did not hate any of them. Both were her kids. But the difference was that one was helping her and the other one was always outside. Even God himself is partial. Hello? He said I will make a difference between the children that serve me and the one that does not serve me. You don't expect God to give blessing to somebody who, whose life is in the church and he will carry the same blessing and give to the one that they have to beg to come to church. There are two different children. If you're a mother, you will understand what I'm saying. And so Rachel understood. He said, no, I can't let this thing go to Aiso. Because he's a casual man. He does not take things seriously. Hear me, God will not give blessings to casual Christian. God cannot give you wealth if you are too casual. If they use reason, they serve God. They use logic, they, they, they serve God. Your, your journey is still far. Until you serve God in his terms, by his principles, you are far from it <laughs> and the woman said, and she called Jacob and said, Jacob, come, oh yeah, oh yeah, go and make this thing. This is how your father likes it. This is how your father likes it. When you prepare it, go and give it to him and let him release that blessing he wants to give to Esau. Release it on you. Hear me, you cannot, if you go to a prophet empty handed, that error, you are going for prayer, you know, hold something for hand, forget it. He pray for air. Hello. He pray for where? Eh. Hey. Go with a venison. And say, Father, bless me. Prophets hold the keys to kingdom wealth. So when God blesses you with one, you are fortunate. It's not everybody that has the opportunity to have a prophet in his life. 
Isaac was a patriarch. Today we pray, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's supposed to be God of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. But he was robbed off because he casualized everything. Ah, leave that in. I saw them they talk. Ah, leave that in. Let me tell you something. There are things you will do for God that will move the hand of God in your direction. Solomon was born out of adultery. Eh? But he was the only man in the Bible that God came down and asked him, oh God, what do you want? Your background does not determine your future. It is your decision. The decision you make today to push, to break the limit. Solomon knew where he was coming from. <laughs> My guy took 1,000 cows. Nobody don't do them. He began to slaughter. In one night, he killed 1,000 cows. God said, wait till it happen. That is a venison. That time he never got on you. It was after that sacrifice that God said, no man before or after you will beat you when it comes to wealth because of the venison he put on the altar. Somebody will say, when Isaac saw that it was not Esau that brought the venison, why did he stop his blessing? Why did he carry the blessing and gave it to Isaac? I, Jacob, I will explain. A man who is with a venison is a, in his hand is a man who is covered. Somebody will say, ah, is it only for kingdom prosperity? No. The venison covers you. When others are being afflicted, you are exempted. Why? Because you are a sacrificial giver. You cannot suffer what the Gentiles are suffering. Some people, when they call them for a dream, they go summon you for coven. You'll come. Carry your, your go where your bottom box self. Go answer them for coven. <laughs> no covering over you because you are too stingy. Too stingy to be covered. There is nothing you get in this life that does not come with a price. Whether in the realm of, of the kingdom of darkness or in the kingdom of God, there is always a price. A price to be paid. One day, one of my daughters was telling me. She said, ah, Mama, something happened. When I traveled, I noticed it. The lady came and said they put something on the altar. They took something to a shrine to harm her. And then she decided to take double of what the person put there and took it to an altar. And that thing they did against her bounce back. I say yes. Whatever you see the devil do in a photocopy, because in the realm of the spirit, that is what we do with altars. Altars are not for decoration. They are for battle. Hello. What are the benefits of a venison? For those who are writing. What are the benefits of a venison? <laughs> Number one. Venisons are used to provoke prophetic blessings. They are used to provoke prophetic blessings. Hear me, oh. Venison is not tight. It's not offering. It's not first fruit. It's a prepared, sacred sacrifice. Hear me. If you are conversant with those, if you if you are conversant with all these um, ritual killings and um, that is going on, it's not their fault. It's what they ask them to bring. Hello, you cannot get wealth in the kingdom of darkness. You just appear. They give you money. Now lie, blood must flow, and they don't take what you hate. They take what you love. If now your wife you love pass, now they go carry. They won't tell you. If now your mama you like, now they go carry you. Hello. It is a sacred, prepared sacrifice. And it's used to provoke prophetic blessing. But hear me. 
It takes battle to fall into that line of venison. You must fight your flesh. You must fight your desire. You must fight your need. Hear me. You don't even have shoot or wear to church. But here is in your hand this money. Ah, what do I do? What do I do? And you carry the money for the shoe. You wear betrothed slippers. And you drop that venison on the altar. And somebody will look at you and say, Shorty Yahweh. This money where you give pastor now, he can buy you shoe. Why you drop on there? They don't understand. It takes conquest. Isaac said to Esau, go with your bow. Go with weapons of war because you must fight. You must battle with self. You must struggle with your desire. You must put it under subjection. <laughs> you just say, you just say, give us have plenty money. No, it's not because they have plenty money. They just defeated their flesh to get to that point. You must fight. You get to a point where money is nothing to you. Where car na rubbish. Somebody was asking me today. He said, ah, are you going to church with that car? I said, before car, they know they use like go church. Must there be car before you go to church? Some people, if they never make up, if they never do their hair, see the way I'm looking, see my dress. Really? Really? <laughs> As I did, so I like the true sleeper. So. <laughs> Some of you must have seen me. I go, if I come to church now, I'm a true sleeper. You go see for my life. You go see, ah, mama, no get money to buy you. No. All those things don't matter to me. They are dead to me. If I get you women, if I know we are you women, my priority is the kingdom of God. It takes a lot. Sometimes, no food. But you need to drop the venison because it's not about now, it's about tomorrow. You need to drop the bed venison because it's not about now, it's about your children. You need to drop the venison when you understand where you are coming from. You need to drop a venison because that is the only thing that can speak for you. A lady called me last night, her name is Helen, and she said to me, Mama, my mother is about to die. She is in the hospital. What should I do? Okay, and I told her, I said, okay, let's pray. Give me her name. And she said, no. My spirit said, is more to eat than prayer. I need to drop a sacrifice in exchange for her life. I said, you are a child that understand the things of the spirit. There are times you need to drop a sacrifice for your family. There are times you need to drop a sacrifice for the strong man to die. There are times you need to drop a sacrifice. You have to shed blood. You need to cry for your freedom to be better. You need to cry for your breakthrough to come. You need to shed blood for that deliverance to come. Hear me, child of God. After this program, your breakthrough shall manifest. Hey! Somebody use a plate of food to collect his birthright. Oh God, bring a plate of food. Let me give it back to you. You sit down. People are dying in your family. You sit down. Nobody is making it in your family. And you fold your hands and say, when you reach my turn, oh God, wait. When you reach your turn, then God disgrace you inside. <laughs> the hand of Esau, but the voice of Jacob. As he could not differentiate, there was a venison in his hand. The venison covers you. It doesn't matter who is looking for you. It doesn't matter where they have taken your name. It doesn't matter the altar. When there is a venison in your hand, the venison speaks for you. Akata, hear me. All those men that will come to church and say, I want to buy a land for the church. You just say they're not get sense. You think they'll be mumu? Or you think the pastor rubs something from mouth? Talk as I do. Story. They know the benefit they are deriving 
from those things they drop on the altar because the altar is a place of battle the altar is a place of war and this young lady said to me said no i need to drop a sacrifice to switch for my mother's life i said drop the sacrifice and then i spoke a word this afternoon she sent me a message and said just after two hours you pray my mother was discharged from the hospital hear me child of god after this meeting tonight it doesn't matter how long it has held you down it doesn't matter how many people it has stopped your case is different your case is different your case is different if the prayer is for you shall never return Jacob was a wrestler from birth, from his mother's womb. He warred with his brother. Even when they were coming out, he held the egg for leg. He hold the leg. <laughs> he don't tell where he don't define firstborn. <laughs> Hear me, there is nothing you cannot achieve if you understand the power of a venison. Even after the father blessed him, he continued to struggle. He met a man called Laban. Laban is the father of Lebanese. You know Lebanese people? You cannot cheat a Lebanese man. Now he go use you. Lebanese. Laban is their father. The man is a cheat. But Jacob was a crook. When a cheat meets a crook, Labor cheated Jacob for, for 14 years. Serve. Give me picking. You do what you You put the first one. He said, ah, for my family. Now, first, uh, second daughter, not the married first girl. No. Really? Now, what till we talk? He said, okay, no problem. I'm going to go. When Yam was strong, <laughs> he do another seven years. He carry wife, give him. Okay, settle me now. The guy carried all the ram where he promised to give him. Go ahead. But the crook is a crook. <laughs> a crook. Imagine a man wake up in the morning and say, but because your brother asked you for food. What did, I, I was asking myself, how did that thing come? You know, ask for another thing now in bed, right? Seriously. That guy is a crook. <laughs> Hear me, child of God. Whoever has cheated you, whoever has taken what belongs to you, whoever has taken what belongs to you, after this meeting, there shall be restoration. Hey. Despite the fact the blessing of his father was working with him, <laughs> he said, People will serve you. People, Laban, things say smart. Jacob was the first man to initiate painting. He was the first man to paint. And his own painting was not physical painting, spiritual. He painted spiritually. Imagine you paint, you show animal. Then the animal go do something. That paint, color, now they come born. You know, say so that paint. That's how crook, crook, crook. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. It takes a crook to invent something. No? <laughs> if you are not a crook, you cannot. Uh, well, let me not talk. For the same mama say, let's be crooks. You don't understand. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but the point in his life, Jacob was tired. There are times where your certificate will become useless. There are times when connection will abandon you. Men will abandon you. At that point, what we speak for you is that covenant blessing you collected. Exporter is failed him. He was tired. He said, how long will I be crooking people? How long? The life we live is dynamic. Very dynamic. You must understand. 
current revelations, current happenings, call what is happening now to flow. There are so many of you now. If I ask you what is MS Word, now go to look me. How many of you now know MS Word? Try. There are still some people in this age that don't know what Microsoft Word is. They don't know. If you give exam now, plenty go fail. <laughs> you must understand. You must move with the time. You must be current. You must flow. Hear me? That is why money is called currency. Because it flows. And if you don't understand the principle of money, it will never come your way no matter what you do. Money does not go to stingy people. Quote me. Underline it. Money does not go to stingy people. Akagon. No, they go there. Because it's supposed to flow. Somebody will say to me, but God was angry with Jacob. No, God was not angry with Jacob because Jacob took the blessing. God was angry with Jacob because Jacob lied to his father. Never lie to a father. Somebody hearing me tonight. Never lie to a father. It has consequences. God was angry with Jacob because he lied to his father. Why do you lie for what is your own? You already have the birthright. You understand me? He already had the birthright. He didn't need to, uh, is this Isaac or is it Esau? You begin to form, you begin to hide. No, don't lie to a father. A father can never be wrong. When correction goes up, upward, when a, a child begins to correct his father, rebellion is cooking. Are you listening to me? Rebellion is cooking. When you begin to correct your father, at that point, see finish, don't enter. <laughs> Go and ask him what happened to him. When he saw his father's nakedness, father cursed him. Go and ask Reuben. His father cursed him. And it's difficult to remove the curse of a father. It takes a higher authority. Never lie to a father. Especially a spiritual father. Ananias and Sephira enter church. Peter asks them, how much did you sell it? They lie to drop. <laughs> God was angry with him because he lied to his father. Let's round up quickly. <laughs> Number two, the power of the venison. It has the capacity to restore what was taken from you. This was God's restoration strategy. Jesus was a venison for your redemption. He came at a very expensive price. Somebody gave his life that you may live. It was God's restoration strategy. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 1, chapter 11 from verse 1 and 6. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1 and verse 6. You must learn to be resilient when it comes to prophetic words, don't stop. Keep building. Keep building seed on seed. Keep building seed on seed. Ec let's go there. Ecclesiastes 11. Somebody read it for me sharply. Somebody read for me. Okay. I find it after many days. All right. Verse 6. In the morning, so thy seed. In the morning, so thy seed. And in the evening, we told not thine hand. In the evening, we told not thy hand. For thou knowest not whether. Whether shall prosper. Thou knowest not whether shall prosper. Either this or that. Either this or that. Or whether the both shall be alike good. Or whether both of them will produce. Learn to be resilient. I don't give now. You don't do. I beg you. <laughs> Never give up until your problem gives up. That's what the Bible says. In the morning, so. In the afternoon, don't hold back. In the evening, keep sowing. You don't know the one 
that will manifest. Or even all of them will show for you. Hallelujah. Learn to be resilient when it comes to prophetic words. Keep sowing. Keep giving. Keep sowing. Keep giving. Elijah said unto his servants, Go and check. The servants, when they came back, he saw nothing. He said, Oh God, go back again. The guy went back. He came. I said, I don't see anything. He said, Go back again. He went on the several time. He said, I saw a hand. I saw a hand. Don't stop sowing until you see the hand of God on that business. Don't stop sowing until you see the hand of God on your family. Don't stop sowing until you see the hand of God on your life. I pray for you tonight that after this meeting the hand of God will show for you he saw the hand <laughs> Genesis 27 verse 4 another person 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 2 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 2 I want to show you something there let me leave let me, let me leave Genesis Read Second Kings chapter four verse two for me. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Tell me. Okay. What hast thou in thy in the house? Okay. And she said, uh -huh. Thy handmaid had not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Please, how many people read that part in your Bible? How many questions were asked there? Hello. How many people carry Bible come church today? How many questions were asked in that verse? Two. Is it correct? Is it two? Or is only in my Bible that is two? Talk now. Two questions. What's the first one? What shall I do for you? What's the second one? If not us today, we will answer the first. And dump the second. What shall I do for you? Ah, Pastor, you can do plenty things. <laughs> but the second one said, What do you have in your house? The woman quarantined the first question and decided to be part of the process of a miracle. She ignored the first question and answered the second question. He said, What do you have? The woman did not answer the first. She said, I have a pot of oil. Why? In verse 1, the husband of the woman was a son of the prophet in pretense. Not be everybody they answer son or daughter. It has become typo. Son of the prophet. Daughter of the prophet. But the Bible exposed him. When the wife came, he said, but your, my husband was your servant. There is a difference between a servant and a son. A son does not live. A servant can go anytime. A son stays put. A son defends his father. No matter what the father's nakedness look like, a son defends his father. But a servant is a hireling. The man came in the cloak of a son, but he was actually a servant. He was trying, he was getting things from the servant of God, from Elisha, pretending in the cloak of a son. But when the chips were done, we understood that he was not a son. He was a servant. By their fruit, you shall know them. How can you follow a prophet and die poor to the extent that you leave death? He was not a son. The wife said, my husband was your servant. But in the beginning of verse 1, he said they were one of the sons of the prophet. He was supposed to be a son. But he became a servant. There are so many people that will run after a prophet. Hey, son of the prophet. Son of the prophet. But they are actually multitude. They are not followers. And hear me, no matter how you, how you pretend, you cannot break principle. Uh, Kingdom principles, it will always find you out. And the woman said, All oh, this while my husband has been getting from you, what has he gained? Let me be the one to put down the sacrifice. She said, I have one pot of oil. One pot of oil. That is all I have in my house. She did not tell the man of God, Man of God, leave down what I have first. 
Uh -huh, that one where he said, what shall I do? I not get house rent. My, my children never eat today. I not get shoes to wear. He said, all I have is one wrapper. All I have is one pot of soup. All I have is one delica. She wanted to be in the process of her miracle. Today we have Christians who don't care about the process. We want magic. We don't want to be part of it. Today we have Christians who want profit without process. It does not work. You go wait stay home. You go wait tire. <laughs> the woman ignored it and went for the second one. Number three. Benefit of the venison. <laughs> The venison provokes the hand of God. It provokes. It moves God. What have you done for God? Or what have you given God to make him look in your direction? There are sacrifices and there are sacrifices. There are sacrifices that you give. Your body goes to shed blood. God does not ignore that type. Hallelujah. 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 The blessings of the venison. Genesis chapter 27. Verse 29. If you read it very well, there were nine of them. If you counted the blessings. And this does not only ascribe to Jacob alone. For everyone that understands the principle of the venison. These blessings apply to you. Number one. People shall serve you. And nations shall bow to you. Esther entered the nation as a, a slave. She became a queen. Joseph entered a country as a slave. He created a job for himself. There was nothing like the office of the prime minister in Egypt. Joseph created it. Okay, wait. I will be done very soon. Hear me. When Joseph came to the king, Pharaoh, he said, this is your dream. This is your dream. There were other people to interpret dreams. Joseph said, King Abel, can all these people go? I want to talk to only you. And others left. <laughs> and he talked to the king. There are times you need to talk to God, only you, when others are not there. Hannah waited when everybody had gone. She went to the altar. He said, this is between me and you. He said, let them go. I want to talk to you. And when he was done with the king and interpreted the dream, you know what he told him? He said, but you will look for a man that is discreet, that has the spirit of God. He began to sell his CV to the king. <laughs> the king called and said, where well, was that kind man? <laughs> yeah, only you. Now you fit it up his shoe. The man think and think and think. And. He said, hey, Everything that is in Egypt, I hand over to you. Only on the throne. Now, see. So, for the first time, Joseph was the first person to create the space of a prime minister. He never existed. A slave. I pray for you tonight. Nations will bow to you. I said, Nations will bow to you. I said, Nations will bow to you. Hey, at 17, the guy entered Egypt. And the guy, somebody will say, Oh God, I'm not get husband. Oh, I'm not get who they help me. Joseph did not have a family member. As a matter of fact, now a family member sell him. Is that the people he will call to come and help him? They deliberately sold him. But he walked himself at 30. He became a prime minister. I pray for someone today. I said nations will bow to you. Amen. I said nations will bow to you. Amen. I said nations will bow to you. I said nations will bow to you. If the prayer is for you, shout I receive. I receive. Your venison determines who serves you. The quality of your venison determines. Life does not accept stories. 
Nobody wants stories. Now the result that we they celebrate. How long will you tell us stories? Do what others are doing and give us results. Hello. <laughs> Number two, blessing of the venison. You become Lord over your brethren. Even in the church, there are levels and realms. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9, God said to you, I've, I've raised him to be highest among his fellows. <laughs> it is your venison that raises you. Somebody told a story. He said somebody brought a, a, a seat to Papa Deboye. When Papa Deboye, you know, say he needs to be sit down and pray. When he sit down, lay your hands like this. When he opened this, the bag, he saw what was there. there. My guy, stand up. He said, this one, they don't sit down to pray. They are certain seat, you don't sit down to pray. You stand up. You jump. When God saw sacrifice of, he said, what be this? Who be this? Who is doing this? He came down. Baba, get up. He said, we don't sit down to pray this kind of prayer. Neither am I so make a boy you ororo. There are some seed that provoke some certain ororo. When he enter your head, you said, go no say, something enter your life. How long will you be in the level of 500 and 200? Every Sunday, prophetic seed, you come and put 100 nera. Which day you go come up for there? Since 2019. Enough. Enough. That man today, he pays his offering in check. He signs check. Four million every Sunday. Offering one man. He not get to head. Do what he did and get the same result. God is not partial. The man, the, 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 the vessel God used on Wednesday said, are you ready to be a blessing? The problem is that we are not ready. We are still very stingy. We are still comfortable in mediocrity. I'm okay. As long as my, I don't see full job, I can wear clothes, I get small recharge card, I'm okay. Really, I'm not okay. Oh. Sorry. Some people, they buy a house for Dubai. Some, they buy for New York. They don't get two heads. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This year, 2022, you will be Lord over your brethren. You will be Lord over your brethren. You will be Lord over your brethren. If the prayer is for you, shout fire. Number three, your mother's children will bow to you. Your mother's children. <laughs> the best see the worst place to be disgraced is in your family. When your family begin to see you finish insult you, it they pay no. They say it is not a stab that hurt. It's who hold the knife. Who hold the knife? Chuck it for back. Nine be issue. Nine kill the man, not the knife. Hello. This year, twenty twenty two, you mother's children will bow to you. Amen. Despised in this year 2022, wherever you have been despised, you will be celebrated. You will be celebrated. You will be celebrated. Rise up on your feet tonight. Rise up on your feet and raise your hand. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you tonight. Raise up your hands. <laughs> How many of you are ready tonight? Hey, I decree upon the life of someone. I see. You are not ready to receive tonight. I say I decree on the life of someone tonight. I receive. The God of the hand of God ministries uh -huh. shall place a mark on you. Hey, no. A mark of excellency. Hey, no. A mark of success. Hey. A mark of favor. Amen. A mark of elevation. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever has made you lose focus on yourself as a result of responsibility. Some people here, then they carry the family wahala for head. It is draining. 
now by the force of the Holy Ghost I create a shift in the realm of the spirit I say I create a shift in the realm of the spirit I create a shift in the realm of the spirit I create a shift in the realm of the spirit I create a shift in the realm of the spirit from today you will become the center of attraction I say you will become the center of attraction I say you will become the center of attraction put your right hand on your head I say my father my father as I begin to pray by the power of the Holy Ghost in this year 2022 people shall serve me nations shall bow to me open your mouth and begin to pray open your mouth and begin to pray I don't know where you have been turned down nations will bow to you this year open your mouth and pray for yourself people will serve me people will serve me people will serve me in Jesus name we pray amen 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 fire let your hand remain on your head because you are going to pray for your mother's children every power that has vowed that your mother's children will not prosper uh -huh. what affects one affects all it doesn't matter whether you know they talk or you know talk it no matter I pray for someone any of your mother's children under the attack of the enemy oh. by the force of the Holy Ghost I, I command them to prosper Amen. 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 you're going to pray and you are going to call your mother's children by their name. And you are going to shout their name and say, Prosper. Hear me, I prayed this prayer one day. And the following day, I was attacked. Now that time I know, say, my prayer, he enter. Oh, wale, oh, wale, he show, oh, wale. You are going to pray. Pray this prayer from the bottom of your heart. Say, my father, my father. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, as I pray to now, my mother's children, my mother's children, prosper. Open your mouth and begin to pray tonight. Call them by their names. Call them by their names. My mother's children, prosper. Begin to prosper. Every one of you prosper. Vincent, prosper. Austin, prosper. Augustus, prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ, let them begin to prosper. Every one of you begin to prosper. Your race begin to prosper. Joy begin to prosper. Yes, begin to prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ, every one of us prosper. In the name of Jesus, from today, yes, we will prosper. Prosperity will embrace us. In the name of Jesus Christ, yes, oh God, I call all my mother's children. Every one of us prosper. Prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ, yes, oh God. Yes, let us begin to prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ, yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Fire. Fire. Hallelujah. Let's have a seat for a few minutes before we go for tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. How many of us uh, invited somebody as I so we should do yesterday. How many have done that? Stay there. You're looking at me. You have you have you have changed you. <laughs> before you say invite the very first program. 
Are you sure? When I come and carry this one, oh, everybody will wave and listen. Come and carry some other handbills and shout to everybody. Uh, five, five each. Five, five each. Those who are capable, ten, ten. Hallelujah. Somebody praise God. Please remember that the program continues on Sunday. Sunday is the last day of this program. If anybody says they're going to they give them, so they don't waste it. Amen. Please, let's concentrate. Please, look up here. The program continues on Sunday, and if you believe that God has been blessing you, make sure you are here early. 8.30 on the dot, we kick off. Let's make sure that this program, nothing will stop you from coming for the final day. Amen, somebody. And I believe the blessing of God will come on the overflow in Jesus' name. Rise with your offering tonight. I'm going to speak unto your offering. Speak unto your offering. Daddy, I offer to you. By faith, I tap into your abundance. Quickly, quickly. So I can share the grace. Speak into your offering tonight. Offering can terminate your suffering. A good offering can terminate your suffering. Daddy, I speak into my offering. And let this offering and this offerings in my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this offering, oh Lord, take me to my next level of destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, let money serve you. Let money be under your feet. Let money never dominate you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Do I pray quickly? upon these lives. Let success locate you. Let prosperity locate you. May you not go down. You will go up in life. Somebody your aiming can sound louder. You will go up in life. You will not go down. Whatever you put your hand to do from today, it shall prosper. Whatever you do as business, it shall prosper. The Lord will give you new ideas in business. The Lord will give you new connections in business. In 